Hi, welcome back to the Blind LP of Eagle Eye Mysteries in London. So today, right now, we are going to start on case of the interloping imp imposter. And our partner right now is Jennifer. Okay, the phone is ringing. Hello, Jennifer Eagle here. Oh, it's my phone. Ah, hello Jennifer. Lady Cheswick here. Lord Cheswick and I have a favour to ask. Are you and Stakaze free today? Sure thing, what's up? One of your pet panthers gone missing? They have pet panthers. Someone steal your ruby collection? Stakaze and I'll track I'll track them down. No no, Shiba and Bested are safe back on a on the estate. And our ruby collection is safely on loan to the British Museum. This is a bit more mundane favour, I am afraid. Le Lord Cheswick and I will be holding our fifth wedding anniversary party at Warwick Castle. We've rented the entire castle for the weekend. Oh, wow. What we'd like to ask you and Stakase to do is deliver some of our invi invitations and join us at the party. Oh, that's nice. We'd love to. What kind of party will it be? Why, a mas masquerade, of course. We are asking each of our guests to come dressed as a figure from history or literature. A figure that has some kind of feline connection. Feline, uh oh. The team for this masquerade is cats. Excellent. Excellent. A party at the castle sounds cool. Lovely. We'll send a messenger round to your aunt and uncles with the invitations. We'll expect you and Stakas at the castle by 3 pm. Chara! I don't know how to pronounce that. Alright, so, um, I, I guess we'll start from home. Wow, London Messenger services are fast. There's Jeremy with the packet now. Why is Jeremy there? Who's Jeremy again? Swanky pair, swanky, swanky pair. The chair swigs. Everyone knows that when they call, they expect their packages to live at Pronto. Incredible house they have too. So I've heard. Is it true that they have bunches of weird animals running ar around loose on their estate? Oh yes, his lordship loves foxes. There must be a dozen of them in the yard. And her ladyship is mad about all kinds of cats. She keeps two lovely black panthers in the mansion. How they feed them, I don't want to know. Me either. Cool. I'd love to go visit their place sometime. Ah, you'd be lucky. They never have guests. Even when one of us bike messengers comes by, we are only allowed just inside the gate. They are get pre a great pair those two, but secretive as all get out. Okay. An invitation from the Cheswicks. You lucky devils. Their parties are world famous. They always rent some amazing location to hold them in. But a whole castle this time? Wherever do they get the lolly for that? I don't know. Everyone has their theories about how the Cheswicks made the fortune, but I suspect they stumbled across a Mayan treasure on one of their trips to Mexico. Just like them to hunt up some ancient treasure trove. The pair has more adventure in them than Robin Hood and Maid Marian. You jammy beggars. A Cheswick feat. Do me a favour, won't you? Take copious notes on everything you see. Those parties are always crammed with bigwigs, bigwigs, you know. Famous people. It'd make a great story. Funny thing about those Cheswicks. Everyone knows of them, but no one seems to really know about them. Where they come from is anyone's guess. I interviewed them once at a charity dinner and I would have sworn. Lord Cheswick's accent was Spanish. I was convinced he was from Barcelona. Then a year later, I ran into them at the races at Escort, and the man sounded as Parisian as they come. As for her, I can never quite place her accent at all. But wouldn't they be related to the last Lord and Lady Cheswick? They must be from England. Oh no, the present Lord and Lady Cheswick didn't inherit their title from their parents. They bought it. They're just loaded with loot. My theory is that he's a former bullfighter who made a fortune in the ring that would explain his terrific athletic skill. 
She is absolutely mad about kitty books. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all to find that she secretly made a million, publishing her own wildly successful children's stories under a made-up name. But however they came into it, they're just rolling in loot. The mind boggles. Wow! Wow, these are fancy. The invitations are addressed to Lord Pomeroy at Parliament, Lieutenant Havisham of the Horse Guard, Lady Saltcoats, Sir Uppingham. That's a lot of people to remember. Alright. At least four places to go. That's not four places. Oh, because Victoria Station, of course. Buckingham Palace, never mind. Okay, there we go. Buckingham Palace is where the Queen lives when she's in London, but she's not in today. See, stuck and see, they haven't put up the flag. Hmm. Well, very pleased indeed. Delighted to attend. Bit tricky to getting leave from Her Majesty's horse guard on such short notice. But one must do one's best. After all, the Cheswicks have been dear friends since they attended my Victoria Cross Awards ceremony years ago. His lordship asks that we dress up, does he? Jolly good, I've just the figure in mind. England's Lionheart. What? What's that? Who's that, Lieutenant? Just have to come and see, won't you? I'll not give myself away. Okay. Um, Held up by a lion on the right. And, okay. See? There are all, cats of all kinds all over London, stuck as they? This cat is one of the symbols of the British Empire. The lion and the unicorn have supported the British coat of arms since 1603, when James I came to the throne. James was a Scottish king before he, came, he became king of all England. He kept the lion to represent England and the power of the English kings and added a unicorn from his Scottish background. Okay. Parliament. Who shall we meet there? On the North Bank. Okay. Oh, it's um, um, what's his name? Aunt Miranda told me that Lord Pomeroy is a very powerful figure in British politics. Parliament is a perfect place to find him. Wait, then again, suddenly I'm not sure whether I've met him. Hmm. An invitation to the Cheswick's ball? Superb. Those two throw the greatest parties. Costume balls are such a lark. I know precisely who I'll dress, who I'll dress as. Dorothy's favorite fearful feline. Who is Dorothy? Who is that, Lord Pomeroy? Well, you just have to see, won't you? It is a masquerade after all, Jennifer. You'll have to figure out each guess for yourself. Alright. Dorothy's favorite feline. Dorothy? Dorothy is in what? Dorothy is in what? From the story? Wizard of Oz? Okay, please do not make me guess. Let's go to Marlford first. Lady Saltcoat leaves at Marlford Manor. She's pretty well off herself, but I'll bet she'll be impressed by the Cheswick's invitation. Yeah. Yeah, look at her house. This is actually really nice, you know? It's a very nice background. Malford Manor is one of my favourite places to... Uh, no, that bird is back. Or oh, is that a different bird? Malford Manor is one of my favourite places to visit. 
I love picking out on Miss Beeswing's cakes. Oh, a masquerade? How lovely! I do so at our parties. Why, I remember one year the Cheswicks held a marvelous bash for Lady Cheswick's birthday. Lord Cheswick rented an entire train, the Orion Express itself. Was it Orient? Orient? Orion? He had each compartment de decorated to look as if it were a jungle complete with exotic rainforest plants. Tiny monkeys swung from the vines and hundreds of brightly colored birds sang from the trees. Oh my goodness. Is it a bird? Or a monkey? I mean, it should be a bird. There wouldn't be monkeys here. <laughs> and all as the trains sped from London to Venice. Ah, oh, what a pair. This one's a costume ball. Wouldn't that be fun? A literary or historical feline figure, it says. I just know who I'll be, the ancient Riddler. I've no wait. I know. I bet I know. Quite an honor, young miss, to be invited to a Cheswick party. Their guest lists are always very select. They pop by the menu every now and again, but I can't say we know much about them. I was most impressed to hear that some of the rare editions of children's literature present in the British Library were donated by the Cheswicks. The lady is a great fan of Kipling, it seems. Richard Kipling? That's right, the man who wrote The Jungle Book and Ricky Tiki Tavi. His tales of India are some of the most delightful children's stories. Okay. Let's visit the other one. Hampton Court. The invitation to Sir Uppingham is addressed to Hampton Court. I didn't know people really lived there nowadays. What a lucky stiff. Hampton Court, the Grand Palace of Henry the Eighth. A few miles up the Thames River. Okay. I'm not sure I've seen him. This place is fantastic. Henry the Eighth lived here, you know, and met William and Mary too. The whole place is surrounded by these cool gardens. It must be the greatest to live here. Um. Yeah, I've never seen you, I think. How delightful! An invitation from the Cheswicks. And aren't you two great spots for toting it all the way out here? Of course I'd be delighted to come. A feline costume ball, I see. Well, I've just got the idea. I'll suit up as Mowgli's kitty... Catty... Catty... Catty enemy. How did you live? get to live here at Hampton Court? This place is the coolest, but it's open to the public, isn't it? Yeah. Her Majesty the Queen owns Hampton Court and many other royal dwellings, but she chooses to open it to the public so that we can all that so that we all can experience the history and grandeur of the palace. She also allows some of her dearer friends and relatives the privilege of living in some of the quarters here. They are called grace and favor apartments because to live in one means that you are a favorite of the queen. Like you? Quite so. Well, wow. He admitted to that pretty easily. Alright, so we are done delivering the invitations. So time for the real thing. Um, wait. Uh, alright, alright. One week. Now that we've delivered all the invitations, let's get to Warwick for the party. I can't wait. Okay, it's one sixteen now. Uh-oh. We need to check our train schedule and see what platform we need to go to to catch the next train for Warwick. Grab your handbook, Stakaze. It's not with me and we don't have a handbook. But since um, it goes um, by numbers, I will just input the numbers until I get it right. Why not we go backwards? Check your train schedule to see which platform the next train to Warwick leaves from. Remember, it's already 1.16pm. 
I thought we go by numbers. I don't know. I typed in the numpad, but it won't come out as a number. Ten. All right. I don't have. Seven. Six. All right. Okay. Remember, good good boys and girls. It's platform six. Okay. Great, the 130 train leaves from platform 6. It'll get us to Warwick in plenty of time. Let's go! Let's go! Hello! Wow. Why aren't you dressed up, Jennifer? Wow! Lord and Lady Cheswick really know how to throw a party. This place looks like it's right out of, out of a movie about King Arthur. Not quite. Puss in Boots. Suckers here, Jennifer. Now I'm doubly glad that you've come. There's been a dreadful misunderstanding and Alexander and I are assured that you'll be able to help clear things up. Lady Cheswick, who are you dressed as? And she's dressed as Puss in Boots. Why, Puss in Boots, of course, from the fairy tale. Here's our problem. As you know, we're very particular about our guest list. We only invite our dearest friends and never ever allow the press inside. Your Aunt Miranda just rang up to let me know that dreadful man, that that dreadful man Tungsten's party wiles has crashed our party, pretending to be one of the guests. It would be just too horrible to unmask and shove our guests in order to find him. That would spoil our whole party. You must help us ferret him out without letting the other guests know. Alright. Cheshire Cat. Jennifer Suckers, it's me, Lord Cheswick. Great to see you. Has Sarah told you about our problem yet? I do hope you can help us out. We'll try, Lord Cheswick. Which, what famous cat are you dressed as? Why, the Cheshire Cat, of course, from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Those Lewis Carol books are some of my favourites. Alice meets the Cheshire Cat on her trip to Wonderland. He's very mischievous. He can also disappear, leaving only his great big green behind. But I'm afraid I've got to practice that, little son. I'm very pleased at how imaginative our guests have been. The costumes are marvellous. The problem is I know we invited only you, Sakaze, and our four other guests. But doing a quick head count, I come up with five other guests. Sarah, Lady Cheswick, I mean, and I are very serious about our privacy. We are counting on you to root out the uninvited guests and help us eject him or her. Greetings, fair mate. Greetings, Sir Knight, and what name do you go by? Knight I am, but more than that, King Richard I, at your service. Known to be to both friends and enemies as Richard Coeur de Lion. Richard Coeur de Lion? Oh. That is French for Heart of the Lion. Richard the Lion Heart for to you. Oh, I get it. Instead of being a cat, you're dressed as a king whose symbol was a cat. The King of Beasts. Exactly. The people called me Lionheart because of my bravery in battle. I ruled England from 1189 till, 19, till 1199 in the time of the Crusades and the legendary Robin Hood. I was away at battle so much that I only spent six months of my reign in England. What? This doll will take us out to the castle courtyard and up to the battlements. Oh, I've been here. Once. Here are all the other guests, I think once. Lot and La Lady Cheswick have really gone whole hog. Look at all these banners. Let's start with you, yes. Aha, no pictures please, the flesh terrifies me. Sorry to be jumpy, but I'm afraid it's my nature. Have you seen Dorothy or the Tin Man? I must catch up with them. Dorothy, the Tin Man. Oh, I know who you are. 
You're the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz, right? Cowardly? Who are you calling cowardly? Eek, was it a mouse? Oh dear, oh dear, it's not my own fault. I'm so timid. Blame El Frank Bone. Who's that? Someone who frightened you? No. El Frank Bone wrote me this way. He's all tell the children's stories about Dorothy and the Land of Oz. The movie you've seen comes from these books. Okay. Careful, woman child. That flesh reminds me much of fire, the red flower that your people love so. Who are you supposed to be? Surely you've read of me in the Jungle Book. My name is Shere Khan. Or Shere. Lot of the jungle, full of Mowgli. See where the cur burned my tail with his red flower. All the animals in the jungle fear me, even Kaw the snake and Bala the great bear. But I fear only Mowgli. He is a man shall know, but soon he will be a man, and man is the tiger's only enemy. You are legit, you are legit, who are you? And who are you, Thing One? And Thing Two? No, I'm Jenny Fagel, and this is Takazi Gamer. Who are you? Lush, I do not pronounce that. Lush is in Slape Shapu, El Gato Con Sombrero. Huh? My French isn't that good yet, and I don't speak any Spanish, but I recognize that hat. You're the cat in the hat, aren't you? Jake and I used to love that book when we were little. That's me, the mischievous head. Here is my tail and here is my hat. Dr. Seuss wrote me all in rhyme, so as you see, I must rhyme all the time. I remember reading books by the Dr. Seuss when I was little. They were full of weird characters and crazy rhymes. I don't remember you. Stan, you shall not pass. I knew it. I knew it. Stan, you shall not pass without an answer. An answer to what? The riddle of ages. Don't you know the legend of the Sphinx? No. Is that who you are? A Sphinx? What is that? I am the Sphinx. The dread creature with a human head and the body of a lion. To pass, you must answer the same riddle I asked of Oedipus. Or something. Fell and I will devour you as I did the unfortunate man Yikes. of thieves. Yikes. Devour me? What's a riddle? Red creatures walk on four legs in the morning, on two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening. Oh man, that's a tough one. No, it's not. Did you say man? You're correct. <laughs> man crawls on four legs as a baby in the morning of his life, walks on two legs as a grown person, and then in the evening of his years, uses the third leg of a cane. Well done. You. <laughs> It was so weird. I already know the answer. I'm not sure how to... Um, what clues to give. Do I go by elimination? I think we've played cat and mouse with this great creature get crash long enough. Pick the clues that show how each of the invited guests said they'd be disguised and which one doesn't match. Match up. Okay, there's a hint there, so um, hmm. Thank you for giving me the hint. Um, uh, okay, so uh, Muglis is dressed as boots and birds. Lady and Lady Salt Coats, I knew that one. England's Lion Heart. Okay. I'm not related. And then I'll pick the one. Yeah, alright. Those are the clues that po prove our case. Now point out the feline figure that a lot chest switch should unmask and put out of the party. Cat in the head. You got it. You got it. The guest dressed as a cat in the head is really spotty wild from the London sun. To figure this one out, we had to use the process of elimination. To do that, we find out each of the people who are 
who they said they would be and eliminate them from the a list of suspects. Eventually, there will be only one name left, the guilty person. Lady Salkut told us that she was going to dress up as an ancient feline Riddler. One of the guests at the party dressed as a sphinx. Um, and mythological, I think it's a mythological half-person, half-lion monster who asked riddles of travellers and ate those who that couldn't answer. This ancient riddler must have been Lady Salt Coats. Lieutenant Eversham told us he was coming as England's Lionheart. He must have meant King Richard I, who was known as Richard Lionheart for his bravery. Lord Pomeroy told us he was going to come as Dorothy's favourite fe fearful feline. He meant the cowardly lion Dorothy's friend in the Wizard of Oz, who was fearful of everything. Sir Toby told us that he was going to come as Mowgli's enemy. Mowgli was a character in the Jungle Book, in which you know I seven watched it, or read it. Whose worst enemy was Shere Khan, the lame tiger, which I think I should do sometime in the future. But when we were bringing invitations to people, none of them mentioned anything about coming as a cat in the head. A character from a Dr. Seuss book. That must have been the great gate pressure spot, Spotty Wiles. I see. How strange. So McCavity did play a part in this. Strange. I wonder if we'll get to know more about him later on. So anyway, that's the end of this case and uh, in the next case, we shall be taking on case of the Renegade Raven. Um, so, thank until the next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.